Children who are on puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones need more counseling and love. They don't need blades and drugs. Move! Let's go! Move! The legacy of women's sports will be safeguarded for generations to come. Shut it down! Trans women are men. I think we need to acknowledge that biological fact if we're going to have any sort of um, intellectually honest debate about this. Trans women are women, trans men are men, and non-binary people are valid. Hello, I'm John Carlos Estrada. You're watching the All in Y'all, a Sinclair News special looking into the new state laws some say protect Texans, while others argue are direct attack against the LGBTQIA plus community. Data suggests Texas is the second state with the largest LGBT population, a number that continues to grow year after year, growing right alongside with the proposed laws affecting this group of people. This session, the ACLU says more than 50 anti-LGBTQIA plus bills were filed in Texas, the most of any state. Only three bills would make it through both the House and the Senate and receive Governor Greg Abbott's signature. We're going to send it over to Michael Atkinson, who has seen how this legislative session has unfolded under the Pink Dome. In a whirlwind session with attention on tax cuts and education reform, few issues garnered as much attention as legislation focused on the LGBTQ community. How would you describe how this last session was when it comes to LGBTQ policies? Heartbreaking, frustrating. When it comes to LGBTQ policies this past session, three bills stick out. Senate Bill 12 had originally been written to ban drag in front of minors, but it was rewritten to broadly ban sexually explicit performances in front of minors. Senate Bill 14 bans gender-related treatment like hormones and puberty blockers for minors. And Senate Bill 15 extends a ban from last session on trans women from participating in women's sports, now excluding them from college athletics. NCAA has been threatening for years to, uh, to take competitions away from states. They've never followed through with those threats. Governor Greg Abbott saying such policies are protecting, not hindering the rights of Texans. We will continue to advance policies that protect children, that protect women in sports, but protect all Texans and their freedoms. The so-called drag ban changed radically over the course of session as lawmakers broadened it to ban sexually explicit performances in front of minors entirely so as to avoid a constitutional challenge for specifically targeting drag performers. Skeptics have questioned if it's now too broad and possibly banning kids from seeing, say, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders from performing. You talk about uh, the enormous difference between uh, having a young child sitting in front of a, of a man in a G-string um, in, in, and, on the other hand, uh, sitting up in the bleachers of the Dallas Cowboys stadium. Uh, it's, it's a totally uh, false comparison. But it was arguably the ban on gender treatment for trans minors that garnered the most pushback, including the dramatic climax of this session when as many as 300 LGBTQ activists were expelled from the Capitol for demonstrating in the House gallery. We were treated in ways that people had never really seen a group of people treated in the Capitol before. And to me, that points to the attitude that a lot of state leaders have in this state towards our community. That bill takes effect in September. Minors currently on treatment like puberty blockers or hormones will have to be weaned off over time. A study from UCLA estimates that to be nearly 30,000 Texas minors. The ACLU of Texas is working on a lawsuit to stop that bill. This fight is far from over and there are thousands of people that are going to keep turning out and fighting until it's safe for everybody to be here. In Austin, Michael Atkinson, CBS Austin News. Well, thank you, Michael. Similar bills in other states have already had to uh, legal challenges on the federal level. Many of these new laws could be put on pause or even found unconstitutional. Joining me now is Will Mahato with the Texas Tribune. Thank you so much for being with us, Will. Good to see you again. Uh, you've been covering the 80th Texas legisla legislature extensively. You want to talk about one of the bills that didn't quite make it to the finish line, Texas's very own Don't Say Gay Bill. Where does that stand now? Yes, yeah, so that bill did not uh, receive a vote um, in the legislature that to send it off to the, the governor, but uh, lawmakers are still eager to pass that bill. and. There is uh, potential for it to show up in a later special session. Uh, opponents of that legislation criticize it for stifling discussion of sexual orientation and gender identity in the classroom, while supporters of it say that those discussions should not be happening in schools. 
What we're seeing here in Texas isn't an original idea. We're seeing reports that of a rise of anti-LGBTQIA plus legislation nationwide. Where is this all coming from? Yeah, so specifically the Don't Say Gay bill was first seen uh, in Florida, and Texas's version of it is expanded version of that. But I think the, the larger context we're seeing is kind of uh, a consensus that these types of legislation that target uh, LGBTQ community, particularly trans people, resonates really well with Republican voters. And so politicians have uh, chosen to continue to put forward these bills, including restrictions on gender affirming care for trans youth and uh, athlete bans for, for trans athletes. Uh, and, and yeah, they just seem to work really well with Republican voters and we'll probably continue to see those. I was gonna ask you, uh, nationwide we're having a presidential election here in Texas, we're having a senatorial race. Are we gonna see this in those races? There's a good chance we might. Uh, certainly in the Senate race, um, we, we could expect to see it, but uh, for example, Donald Trump after the 2016 and 2020 elections, it was notable that he did not uh, use trans people as one of the issues that he talked about, but after the 2020 election, he, he did start, you know, leveraging that type of rhetoric and uh, really focusing in on, on trans people purely because it really resonates well with Republican voters. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Texas communities are already feeling the impact of SB 12. We'll check in with them and if DAs will enforce this new law. May I ask a question? Are right. you a parent? I'm not a parent okay. yet. Okay. Um, would you consider yourself an expert in parental rights? No, that's why I trust parents to make decisions okay. about their kids. It's your voice, your future. Hear from lawmakers and their constituents about the newly passed LGBTQIA plus legislation signed by the governor in our town hall. And later, we'll introduce you to a true Texas icon, Barbette. You're watching the All in Y'all, a Sinclair News special. That's a look at the Equality Alliance's Unite the Fight Gala. It's one of the largest LGBTQI plus fundraisers in the country hosted here in Austin. Since 2017, the Equality Alliance has raised half a million dollars for several LGBTQI plus nonprofits to provide essential services like health care, education and community outreach. Let's bring in the Equality Alliance's Jansen Woodley on how SB 12 has already impacted them to make sure that as an organization and with Unite the Fight that we stay in full compliance with regulatory uh, shifts that are happening with SB 12. So we've raised the age limit to our event. Um, it is now 21 and up. We're still going to push forward. We want to make sure that we create a platform for all of these performers and and really uh, allow people to see that drag is art, drag is light, it's entertainment. We asked Travis County Attorney Delia Garza how she planned to prosecute anyone suspected of breaking this new law. She tells us her office looks at everything on a case-by-case -case basis and adds, quote, we are disappointed to see that instead of addressing actual public safety threats like gun violence, the legislature has passed laws that will have little to no effect on the day-to-day -day operations of our community and its safety needs. Well, from Austin to the rest of Texas, after the break, we'll check in with how SB 12 is impacting other communities across the Lone Star State. You're watching the All in Y'all, a Sinclair News special. Welcome back. We're going to check in with our reporters position across Texas and they look into how SB 12 is impacting their community and spoke with their local DA's office to see how they'd be enforcing this new law. Let's go first to El Paso. In a downtown El Paso, a handful of bars make up the Pride District and for many, this little corner of the city is a place to find community and safety, but self-expression could look very different here in the Sun City very soon. The Borderland Rainbow Center is an LGBTQIA community space in El Paso. Alongside advocates, they're asking the city manager and city attorney to develop a plan to promote a safer community for all residents. Part of their recommendations includes deprioritizing the enforcement of drag bans throughout El Paso. We sat down with District Attorney Bill Hicks about what SB 12 would look like in the Sun City. You know, that's a very difficult question to answer because uh, that uh, offense uh, could take on many different looks to it. Uh, it could be, you know, anything from some sort of sexual performance uh, in front of minors, 
uh, to um, you know, any kind of simulated act. But Hicks says that right now his office is stretched too thin to prioritize SB 12. The district attorney says things will be sent to regular courts and be treated as regular offenses. Reporting from El Paso, I'm Vania Castillo. Thank you, Vanya. All right, let's see how things are going in San Antonio. The Bonham Exchange is one of the many places in San Antonio that hosts regular drag shows. Now, many supporters of the LGBTQ plus community have wondered what the impact of SB 12 will have here in San Antonio. We've got a lot of choices. We still have discretion where um, we can we can make decisions about how cases go forward. We have to review every case. We'll do that. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not aware of any conduct that's happened in Bear County that would that would require us to send anybody to jail. Recently, we spoke with several of those supporters to see what their thoughts are on bills like this. They've expressed frustration over some of the things lawmakers considered during the session. Supporters of the bill say they are meant to protect children from explicit materials, but some members of the LGBTQ plus community and their allies disagree. They say bills like SB 12 are rolling back their rights. I don't understand all the bills. I don't understand all the, the noise being made. Um, we're not a threat to anyone. Earlier this month, Robert Salcedo with the San Antonio Pride Center actually told us it's very disheartening what is happening. He also told us that trans people are part of the community here and that they're going to continue to let their voices be heard despite the legislation that makes them feel targeted. I'm Christina de Leon. We will send it back to you. All right, thank you, Christina. Now let's check in with Abilene. People come to watch stories be brought to life here at the Abilene Community Theater. It also may be the center of a debate for some. This is our main stage. Um, uh, this is where we put on most of our productions. The president of the Abilene Community Theater, Scott Miller, says at ACT they believe in the freedom of speech and artistic Space. expression Pretty involved in the many shows promoting. and performances there. And with Senate Bill 12 ultimately restricting kids from attending drag shows, Miller reminds us of the long history in the theater of men dressing up as women from ancient Greek theater to Shakespeare. Miller says he also believes that parents, whether they're a same-sex couple or not, should have the right to bring their kids to a drag show if they want to. But I've seen one here at the theater and there was nothing provocative about the show at all. It was just, it was sort of a celebration of diversity. And, um, you know, that may be too much for some people. Miller put it this way, just like comedians have different audiences, drag shows do as well and those shows can be family friendly, saying the theater is a space where people should be able to feel at home and that includes children as well. Reporting in Abilene, I'm Farrell Walton. Thank you, Farrell. Still ahead on the All in Y'all, we had a conversation between lawmakers and their constituents. Here are the arguments being made over the new laws affecting the LGBTQIA plus community. We're now going to share with you part of Sinclair's Town Hall, Your Voice, Your Future, the All in Y'all edition. We invited lawmakers on both sides of the aisle as well as an eclectic group of Texans they serve. The part we're about to show you is a discussion on SB 14. I don't believe that there was substantive scientific medical uh, acknowledgement at all. Um, and that's very concerning that we are um, entering a time in the state of Texas where we are so distrustful, we won't listen to the science or the medical associations that uh, um, could best advise us. This is not a quality of care issue. I don't think that um, potentially sterilizing or chemically castrating children or amputating their healthy body parts is ever quality. I think parental rights are sacred. I think the most important job in the world is being a parent. And the fact that politicians want to undermine parents in Texas should outrage all of us. May I ask a question? Are right. you a parent? I'm not a parent okay. yet. No. Um, would you consider yourself an expert in parental rights? No, that's why I trust parents to make decisions okay. about their kids. Intersex children were once again left out of the conversation. And in response to what gender affirming care is for minors, no one is looking to chemically castrate a child. No one is looking to put them through that kind of surgery. That's not what gender affirming care for children is. And I feel like pushing forward that misconception is what makes this debate a debate. Well, that's just a bit of our town hall following this newscast at 7 p.m. The rest of it will stream in its entirety on CBSAustin.com. 
One thing that could be agreed upon during the town hall was an increased focus on mental health. We want to remind our viewers of the 988 suicide and crisis lifeline. If you or someone you know is having trouble with their mental health, please give them a call. It's truly a global headliner, the 1920s and 30s. It was their Texas grit that molded Barbette into the worldwide star. You'll get to meet them in just a few minutes. You're watching the All in Y'all Sinclair News Special. From Texas to the world, Vanderclyde Broadway, better known as Barbette, was the drag performer and aerialist. The Texan wowed crowds all over the world, including at the world-famous Moulin Rouge. Barbette's story shows us that drag has been a part of Texas for more than a century. It was the beauty and athleticism that made Vanderclyde Broadway famous. He was truly a global headliner. He was a drag aerialist and circus performer in the 1920s and 30s. Vander was better known by his stage name, Barbette. Performed as far away as the Moulin Rouge, the Folie Bergère, did Australian tours, South American tours. But before the spotlight, Vander was raised in Round Rock. It was there he became fascinated with the circus. He fell in love instantly. He knew he was destined to be a performer. He joined the circus at 14 with an act called the Alpharetta Sisters who were looking for another sister for their act. The sisters asked if he'd be okay dressing up in drag and he agreed. It was his ticket to see the world. Drag is a very old art form, so it was common in the 1900s. It was a standard part of vaudeville. Paris was where Barbette really came to life. He was known for dressing up in a woman's ball gown and would trapeze across the stage. Barbette was very well known in Paris. There is actually a, a major theater critic who opened an article with, have you seen Barbette? All of Paris has seen Barbette. Midway through his act, he'd reveal his masculine physique to the sounds of gasping in the audience. In a 1969 New Yorker article, Barbette described his act as a thing of beauty, strange beauty. What determination and grit can take you, especially in if you don't fit where you're from, that you can really transform yourself and find where you belong and be extremely successful at that. Well, that's going to do it for us. I'm John Carlos Estrada. You've been watching the All in Y'all Sinclair News Special.